in putting this together, I've come across some new stuff. And I've been able to put things together that I didn't put together before. So this is an exciting day for me. But you understand or not, another issue. But I <laughs> uh, let me tell you what you already know. A little brief review. Uh, you understand the functions of reviews, quick reviews. If you already know the stuff, you don't need it. And if you don't know the stuff, it's incomprehensible. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, what we already know, and you've heard from me over the years, uh, reading's good for you. There's the page one on here. Uh, by the way, there are two handouts today. This is the talk. The other one is a paper that Marilyn has given me permission to distribute to everybody, which I think may be the big one, the biggest one I've ever been involved with. Very happy about it. It'll be in our California Journal. Okay. Uh, more reading means better reading, better writing, better spelling, better everything. It's the best thing we've got going in all of academia, anything connected to literacy. Uh, they write better, spell better, have a better feeling for grammar, just about everything connected to literacy. Not only that, people who read more know more. They know more about science, they know more about literature, history, and they know more about practical stuff, too. That's interesting. Readers are not nerds. Uh, that's going to be the topic of a paper in a few months. We're about to mm -hmm. data on it. Uh, the people who read a lot are not considered nerds by their friends. They're as involved in life, probably more involved in life than non-readers, um, et cetera. Many sources of this research that I've worked with over the years, uh, case histories, which I think are very compelling. Uh, we've got correlational studies. Those who read more do better. And the most convincing that my colleagues who are very uh, careful about the scientific studies. We've got them. Studies of Sustained Silent Reading, SSR, right? Formerly known as USSR. Remember, some of us remember that? Uninterrupted Sustained Silent Reading. Uh, look at the data on this. Kids in free reading classes do better, who have free reading included in their school day do better on all kinds of tests. And there's been major controversy back and forth. Oh my, free reading wins, wins, wins all the time. What I have here in the middle of the page is the result of the day I discovered Excel. <laughs> I have an incomprehensible table, which is what you really need to make a reputation in academia. <laughs> if things are too clear, <laughs> think, I understand this, it couldn't be very profound. <laughs> In fact, there are studies like this. Uh, Victor Nell, in a wonderful book called Lost in the Book, it's the ultimate book on pleasure, it's great, 1988. It's an art. He did a summary in Reading Research Quarterly. It's wonderful. Uh, he did a study to see wh why things are evaluated as good literature. The correlation was the harder the text, the more people want <laughs> great literature. Uh, I'm going to interrupt my whole flow and tell you a little story. This is not in my script, but it's so juicy. Uh, a couple of professors in the Department of Education, two new professors were given the uh, assignment of getting guest lectures. So they decided to play a little joke. So Department of Education, they hired a professional actor. And they told everyone, this is Dr. Fox. It's called the Dr. Fox study, and it has been published. They gave the guy the script that was utter gibberish. It just had, you know, symbols and equations and graphs. And, you know, they used all the fancy, techy stuff, PowerPoint, this and that, and everything. And the guy was a professional actor, so he did a terrific job in the performance. <coughs> sparkling, brilliant, and humorous, but it was total nonsense. It was voted the best presentation of the year. <laughs> Does that confirm your suspicions or what? Okay. 